All right, so I'm stopping off here in McAlpin, Florida, a little uh, FL10 Little River uh -huh. Air Park, and met up with Bob here. Bob, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Bob Lester. I live over here in McAlpin and uh, Little River Air Park. And Bob has a couple airplanes, and before we go into the hangar, he's got obviously another one outside the hangar, which is a Stinson, classic Stinson, and a very unique prop that I've never heard of or seen before, and it's some really cool technology. So. Could you explain what this is and how you came across it? Well, basically, it's an aromatic propeller, which was pretty popular for uh, air, uh, for Pete, or sorry, for uh, Stinsons back in the 40s and 50s. Okay. And uh, they well, most of them wore out over time and were replaced with standard metal propellers. And this one here, I found still in the crate in Germany, and I had it brought out here. And it uh, it's a self-adjusting propeller, so. For takeoff, you can have 100% your horsepower for takeoff, and it uh, it, it starts uh, it changes pitch for cruise automatically. Just done with uh, counterweights and centrifugal force. And we can kind of see that we can kind of see that through your spinner. That's mm -hmm. that's the counterweight right there. Mm -hmm. So how many hours have you flown behind this propeller now? Probably about 50. Yeah, you know, it's it works out really well. It, uh, you're at uh, at the end of the runway, you're 200 feet above the ground, and as you uh, pick up speed, it keeps readjusting. You know, so it's it's a uh, it's an interesting piece of technology. It really makes the airplane come alive. And do you get more of a, I would assume a better takeoff and climb performance with this prop Absolutely. and and, and Absolutely. cruise, or where do you get the better I lose performance? A little bit on the cruise. Uh, I think I lose about six seven miles an hour on cruise, but. My fuel burn went down from 10, down, 10 gallons an hour down to, say, 8, uh, cruising at the same speed. So it's, it, it really does help out the airplane altogether. It really okay. makes it come alive. And, and this was made, you said, back in the day for Stinson. So there's probably no more stockpiled somewhere. No, actually, if you go to Athens, uh, Tennessee, uh, to the Swift Museum, you go in there, just about every plane on display there has one of these propellers on it. They were used a lot on the Swifts, and they were used on the Blancas, you know, and the Stinsons. All right, so also in the hangar here at Bob's is a peat and pole, or what we call a peat, powered by a Corvair. So I'm gonna let him talk about how he acquired this aircraft, what he's done to it, and how many long hours he has on it. Well, okay, picked it up, uh, I believe in 2009 in Arizona, and flew it back to Florida. And it originally had a Lycoming 0145 65 horse engine. It was a pathetic little one power thing. And so one of the first things I did to it is I put the Corvair engine and a warp drive propeller on it. And since then I've also added uh, the big Harley Davidson wheels and, and had uh, uh, mechanical shocks instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, bungee cords for sh uh, shock absorption and the bigger gas tanks. Kind of made it my airplane, finished it. And I've been flying it all over the country. I've made like five trips to Broadhead, Wisconsin in it from here. And uh, it's a pretty steady little airplane. I love it. Now, he says five trips to Broadhead. We're standing in Florida and the Panhandle of Florida. So that's a long trip. 16 hours, 16 and a half hours sometimes. With an average speed of? About 65. You know, you're, you're no special hurry. You're retired. Where do I have to, what else do I have to do all day? And can I assume your, your altitude was somewhere around 1,000 feet the whole entire way? or? Yeah, we'll go with 1,000. We'll call it thousand. Yeah. <laughs> a low and slow aircraft. Yeah, you like to read the read the names on the water towers. So, Bob, how many hours do you have now total on your Corvair? Uh, it's probably about around a thousand, maybe a little more than a thousand hours. Okay, and which prop are you uh, utilizing for it? The warp drive. Tell me about that. You, you seem to be bragging about that prop. So, talk well, to it, us about it. From what, everything we've ever to test is that we found that it puts out way more thrust per RPM than any other propeller. I mean, it doesn't look exactly like a 1920s airplane propeller, but it is extremely efficient. And uh, we found that the top speed you can get out of it is like about 155, but if you're not going any faster than that, you want uh, something that will uh, uh, get you moving, and uh, the warp drive will do that. So your speed is roughly 65 miles an hour, you said. That's the airframe, So not go any faster. So what do you rotate and climb out at type? What are the speeds? Uh, well, I get the tail up almost immediately, and I rotate it about 40, 45, and climb out about uh, 55. And I can, with this engine propeller uh, combination, I can wind this plane up to 95. It's not happy about it. It's pretty tight, but uh, you can do it. And uh, 
Matter of fact, in 2009, they had a, a little, uh, won't we'll call it, it's the non race race, and it finished first. So. Okay, and for those who are not familiar with the peats, what uh, is the empty? What is the empty weight and gross weight? You know, useful load and that kind of stuff. Okay, I believe the uh, the empty weight on this one's around 750, and people have flown these things that are at 1,200 pounds of weight. You know, I don't think that's considered the normal maximum, but uh, I think the normal maximum is around uh, 9, 950, something like that. But you're just carrying two people. If you have another person in front, you have no baggage. That's it. It's just two people or one person in baggage. Okay, and your particular aircraft, these can be built in two configurations, I understand. Yours is built all wood? Yeah, the original ones were wood. Actually, the original ones were wood with a Model A Ford engine on them. And uh, there's another version uh, that uh, steel tube fuselage, and they're using the wings and the uh, empennage of a uh, Piper uh, J3 Cub, Piper Cub. So where, where are some of the most... Where are some of your most favorite places to fly this aircraft, being that uh, the nostalgic of it and that kind of stuff? I just, well, I'm just doing the Waldo Pepper thing all over this uh, North Florida. I just, I just fly it everywhere. I have the Stenson, that's for trips, but I hardly ever pull that out of the hangar. I have so much fun with this. I'm at the airport a lot more these days editing and walking out of the FBO, out onto the ramp, it's bright. So I've been wearing my flying eyes eyewear a lot more these days. They're lightweight, extremely comfortable, flexible, and have micro thin temples that slip under your headsets. You like saving money? Get 10% off right now by using the code experimental. Check out the links below. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Diamond Doors at diamonddoors.com. Flying Eyes at flyingeyesoptics.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at flyfoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. What is, what is this supposed to be? For William Wynn. <laughs> Alright, get a couple different angles here. <laughs> 